Welcome to our webinar for the very beginner, Excel for the very beginner. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Alicia Kidd, an online learning specialist with TechSoup. Now let's make sure everyone is comfortable using the webinar platform. Now the chat box which is located on the bottom left hand corner of your screen, at any time if you have problems viewing or hearing the audio, just make sure to chat us. And our chat person, Susan Hope Bart, will assist you with chatting the number as well as the passcode. Also, if you're hearing an echo through your computer speakers or having any issues with the audio, again, you can dial the toll-free number that was listed in your registration email, but we're also going to be chatting it out if you're having those issues. The chat box is chat box is also for your questions. We will be flagging your questions and queuing your answers and questions during the Q&A session. So we encourage high engagement and dialogue throughout this amazing presentation. You will be able to find this recording at TechSoup webinar page by the end of the day. This is where we share our webinar recordings and also announce upcoming webinars. And we encourage everyone to check you know, our future webinars, and our recorded webinars. Also following this presentation, it will be recorded as well as with the PowerPoint. We will send an email to all registered attendees no matter if you attended or not. You will receive that by the end of the day as well as it will be uploaded on our YouTube page and SlideShare and all of our social media. And if you're on Twitter, we highly encourage you to follow us on Twitter. Become a follower, and we hopefully will follow you back. And then you can also tweet us at TechSoup. Also hashtag us at TechSoup Webinars with the hashtag sign. Again, my name is Alicia Kidd, and I'm the Online Learning Specialist with TechSoup. And our presenter here is Lashika Phillips. She's an Associate Program Manager with TechSoup. Now let's talk a little bit more about our amazing organization. TechSoup is headquartered here in San Francisco. And we, what I want to know is since I'm in San Francisco, where is everyone from? So chat out, spend the next few seconds to let us know where you're coming from. I'm in San Francisco, Florida, Toronto, Texas, New York, Huntsville, Alabama, Waco. Oh my God, this is an – oh, it's – it's everyone here. Great. Atlanta, Maryland, Phoenix. Great. So as I stated before, TechSoup basically um, is we're, we have a global mission. And what we do is we offer so many great services. Um, we help more so many of our organizations get billions of dollars in technology projects and grants to our partner and NGOs, and those products and grants come from all of our corporate sponsors and partners. So now what I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to turn this over to our presenter, Lashika Phillips. She's going to go through this amazing demo. And just remember, this is Excel for the very beginner. So this is going to be a fast ride. It's going to be engaging. Please, if you have questions, we're going to queue it up and look forward to answering your questions. And now I'm going to turn it over to Lashika Phillips. Hi, good morning everyone. Thank you again, Alicia, and thank you, Susan. I know that you are managing the chat right now. And I just saw that we also have people listening in and watching from India and Canada. So thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited for the opportunity to share the basics of Excel with you. And as Alicia mentioned, this webinar is designed for the very beginner in mind. Yes, we welcome first-time first users all the way to Excel experts. So to get a better idea of our audience, I know we know your location now, but now I want to find out what is your level of skill and experience with Excel. So are you a new Excel user? Are you a fairly skilled Excel user? Are you an advanced Excel user? So if you've not already done so, if you look at your screen, you can select your level of experience.
Thank you. Okay. Wow. Look at this. So we have majority of our majority of our listeners today are our new Excel an Excel user. So that is fabulous. Well, you are definitely at the right place at the right time. So now I would like to find out what is your primary goal in joining this, this webinar? Well, now I've just found out that the majority of you are on here for the first time, so I'm guessing it's to learn how to use Excel. And, uh, but we're more than happy to, if you have ideas on how you need to train your staff or you need quick refreshers, uh, we welcome you to answer that as well. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the opportunity to do that. So we're going to jump right in, and I'm going to start sharing my screen. So in just a minute here, you are going to see a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, and we are going to start from the very, very beginning, and we're going to go over some of the most commonly used uh, tools and features. So get ready. Here we go. Okay. And so if you're not aware, just let me share this uh, with you very briefly. Excel is a great, um, it's a great sp spreadsheet application used to create forms, you can use it to create reports, graph data, and even directories. Uh, some nonprofits use Excel to track donations, to record volunteer hours, and to manage contacts. Uh, with a wide range of financial functions and formulas and add-ons, nonprofits can really manage data in a more effective way using Excel. I want to point out that the reason why you would want to use Excel as opposed to using a table in Microsoft Word is that the table in Microsoft Word does not give you those added features as far as calculations, as far as filtering. So if you just need a simple table without the calculations and uh, without the other features, and you don't have a lot of data, then a, a table in Microsoft Word would be, would be effective. It would be enough. However, if you do have a large amount of data, and you do need those calculations, then yes, Excel is definitely perfect for you, for your team. So let's just dive in and look at these most commonly used tools. So if you notice when I went to the spreadsheet, we have these options at the top. But I'm going to show you if you select this drop-down arrow here, so if you select Home, you get an expanded toolbar section. Now to keep this toolbar to stay visible, you want to click this option, Pin the Ribbon. And so what this will do, I'll give you an example. So you see how the expanded toolbar, it disappeared. But if I click Home again and have it expanded, and I select Pin the Ribbon, watch what happens. It stays. So I, now I've just pinned the ribbon. So now I don't have to keep selecting home to get these extra, these extra icons and features. Okay? So you want to pin the ribbon. Now let's jump right into Clipboard. And as you can see, it's, I, I know that a lot of you are first-time users, but perhaps you've used Microsoft Word. And if you have, that's very good because a lot of the features in Excel are similar to the features in Microsoft Word. For instance, this first section here, Clipboard, you've got the Copy, Paste, and the Cut uh, icons. And this is to copy information and that you want duplicated. This is to cut information and to place it somewhere else. And this is to paste. So I'm going to just show you very briefly. We can copy here. Here's the icon, Copy. And we want to paste it. Let's say we want to paste it here in this cell. These little boxes, these are called cells. And if you notice, each time I move into a different cell, I want you to look here, right under the, right under the toolbar. This box is the name box. I like to call it the address of the cell, but that's exactly what it is. So if I'm here, and as you can see, I'm in K2. Okay? So we're going to copy the date, and then we're going to paste it there. And so that's the copy-paste feature. I want to show you something else here that I really, really love with the clipboard uh, icon uh, features here. It's this Format Painter. 
So let's let's make this date bold. And let's make it red. And let's make it bigger. And we're going to go over some of these fonts here. Okay. And we're let's let's make it bigger. So what I want to do is I want to copy the format of this sale. I don't want to copy the contents of this. I want to copy the format. Okay. So basically what I want to do is I want another sale to be red, to be larger, and to be bold. But I don't want to have to go to each cell and do that manually for each one. So that's where the Format Painter comes in hand, and I'm going to show you. So what we want to do is we want to select the cell that we want to duplicate the format, not the content. Okay? So we have that cell selected, and now we want to select Format Painter. And let's select the cell where we want to duplicate that formatting. Let's try an email address. And voila, that's what the Format Painter does. And so moving on to font, and as you saw as I played around a little bit changing the font here to red and to bold, this is where you can change your font. I showed you here how to change the color, how to make it bold, italics, underline, just like in Microsoft Word. Here is where you can add borders. And what you would want to do is select the cells that you want to have borders. So let's say this, these are the cells. And you can select all borders. And now you have borders around all of those cells. Okay? And you can remove that here. No border. Okay? Now, alignment. Alignment is where we want to change the direction uh, and the alignment of our of our content. So using this, looking at this cell here, we can have it left aligned. We can have it right aligned. You can center it. And you can also have it where it's at the bottom of the cell, it's at the top of the cell. And depending on how you need your data displayed, you may want it any of these uh, ways here. Okay? And so now I want to show you the wrap text. As you can see here, this cell has the feature, it's wrap text. If we remove that, you can see that some of that, the data is cut off. You can't see everything. You can either expand the, the column this way by double clicking on that column. That's all I did. I just double clicked and it expanded to the longest set of content in this column. But if it happens to be a column like this, perhaps you have a lot of data and you have to see all of the content of the cell um, in the cell and, and maybe multiple lines. And that's where the wrap text, it makes those visible. Now of course you can select the whole column. And now you have multiple lines, and you can see all of your data. Or again, stretch it out this way. You can expand it. Okay? Now with the alignment with the orientation, this is the orientation of the actual content of the cell and not the actual page. To change the page orientation, it would be here under page out, I'm sorry, under page layout for the orientation. But this is for the direction of, it, of the content of the text. So if you select the drop-down, we can change the direction this way. Now, this is just demo. <laughs> we wouldn't want to do, we wouldn't want the email address to be that way. So let's show, I'm going to show you. And remember, all is not lost because we have undo. Undo. And a shortcut to the undo is Control Z. Okay? So let me take a different cell and show you. Let's change the orientation of the date. Okay? And so now moving on to numbers, 
And this is where we can change the format or select the format that we want to use for the numbers in our spreadsheet. So if you look here, it's the drop down. You have several options for formats for your numbers. So we have general where there is uh, there's no number format. This right here is general as you can see. And what I mean by that is there's not a dollar sign, it's not currency, it's not a date. Um, it's the general format. So the number format have, would have decimals. Currency would have the currency symbol associated with it. You have accounting, short date, the long date, time, and percentage. There are other formats, however, Excel for Beginner, and we're going to stick with these here. Um, and I believe that most beginners will feel comfortable using all of these formats. Uh, one of the questions that I get asked the most is what's the difference between using the, um, the format for currency and the format for accounting. And currency is mainly used for general monetary value, and accounting is used to actually align the decimals and the currency symbols. Okay? So I'm going to select this column here, and I want I can do this drop down here and select currency. But I can also just select the dollar sign icon. Okay? And so now it's currency. So if I were to calculate a sum, which we will in a little bit, uh, then we will see that everything will line up. The dollar sign will, li will line up. The decimals will line up because it is under the uh, accounting format. Okay? So now let's look at styles. And since we are uh, talking to the very beginner, we won't go into a lot of these. Um, but there, there is something that I want to show you. If you are a nonprofit and you are managing a lot of data, there is a tool that can really help you analyze your data very, very quickly. And that tool that I love to share is, is found right under here in the Styles tab. And so it's under Conditional Formatting. So if we drop down the arrow here, we have all of these options. And the one that I want to point out today is the Highlight Sales Rules option and Greater Than. Okay? Now I'm going to explain why this would be in handy. If you have a spreadsheet from a fundraiser and you need to reach out or send a separate letter to all of the donors who gave over $100, let's say, you can go to your spreadsheet and you can create a rule to highlight everything over whatever amount, or everything over $100. And so then your data would, um, would tabulate, and you would have all of your, your data. So let's try that. Highlight sales rules greater than. And so for this spreadsheet, let's say greater than, let's say greater than 200. So I'm going to find myself. Do I have a two? No, I have a 250. So we want greater than 250. So I'm going to select that value that's here, and I'm going to say OK. So what's going to happen? Nothing happened. Do you know why? I did not select the column. So let's select the column, conditional formatting, highlight sales rules, greater than. I said 250. Let's say 250. Okay. So everything that's highlighted is greater than 250. So now I've identified all of those donors who've made that contribution, and now I can easily reach out. As opposed to searching the spreadsheet and trying to find that information, I can use this tool to help me locate that very easily. I can also use the Duplicate Values tool to find out where duplicates are. Okay. Again, the column has to be selected. Let's remove this rule. Let me show you how to do that. So to remove a rule, select the column, Clear Rules. Okay. So now let's look at the, the Sales section. And this is where we can insert and delete columns and rows. 
We can also format our different rows, our row height, column width. You can also hide and unhide rows and columns. I'm going to show you a shortcut to that. You can rename a sheet, move or copy your sheets, and you can change those colors. But I'm going to show you a, a very easier way to do that. But I wanted you to be aware what is under this Format Sales tab. These are just a little bit more options for you to choose from. Okay? So to insert, you can go here. You can also, if we wanted to insert a column, you can select where you would like to include your column. If you right-click, you can insert. Okay? You can also do the same thing for if you wanted to insert a row. Just highlight the row. If you right-click, you can now insert a row. Now, I want to bring this to your attention because a question I was just asked was, why would you need to change row height or how, what, what, why is this important? If you have a, a spreadsheet and it has to be on a specific size of paper, if there has to be certain information that has to be on one page, you can go and make your column width. You can customize it. So you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, but these are just, like I said, additional options for you. Now with organizing your sheets, these are sheets. This entire application is a workbook, and inside each workbook are these different sheets. What I recommend is when you start with your raw data, is to let that be maybe your first sheet, but you can also rename it. And I like to do that, and we can call this raw data. Okay? Because what's going to happen, because in a minute we're going to go over sorting and filtering. And so once we have sorted and filtered our, our data for however we need to use it, then what we would want to do is to have that information maybe on a different sheet. So if we were going to filter with the same example I just used, the organization needs to reach out to all of the donors that gave over $250, then what we would want to do is to take the, that data, the list of those 250, and maybe move that here. Okay? We can move that information onto this sheet. And so then we would name this maybe Donors. 250. Okay? So we can delete this here. And if we wanted to come back, again, do our conditional formatting, highlight the rules, and then put all of that information here on this separate sheet. Because now you have your own separate sheet that's dedicated to these donors only, and then you have your original raw data always in place. Okay? Okay, let's move to the fun stuff. This is the editing tab because this is where this is definitely where the mag magic happens. I feel uh, when it comes to analyzing your data because here this icon is where you sort and filter. So this allows you to sort uh, your information in alphabetical order, uh, largest to smallest, or small smallest to largest. And filtering, though, is another way for you to uh, remove some of the information and not delete the information. You're just simply taking it out of the, um, the data like I just showed you. We have the, the donors that gave over 250. So if we wanted to filter those, we would actually be removing uh, that information from the, um, the main data. So let me show you how we want to filter. If I select Donation, and if I select the Filter option, did you, I don't know if you can see. Let's expand. And the way we zoom in is here. Do you see that? I'm at the bottom left-hand corner. So I'm going to do this again so you can see that. So I've highlighted the cell the top of the row of the column that I need to filter. And I'm going to select Filter. 
And so you see now I have this option. So now I'm going to select this arrow, okay? And it's, let's see, am I not getting what I want here? <laughs> I think I may have just done. <laughs> there we go. Yay! <laughs> just a little patience. I don't know. Sometimes Excel can <laughs> can do that, but just be patient. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. But this is what what I was looking for, <laughs> because what happens is when you select the filter option, what happens is it'll generate all of the uh, all of the variables here, and so now it gives you the option to actually to actually filter. So again, let's filter um, two fifty. Okay, and so let's see. So now all I have here is the donations, the $250 donations. Do you see that? So now what I can do is I could copy this, copy. A shortcut to copying is Control-C. I'm not sure if you know that. I could go now to my Donors tab and I can paste. And so now here is my 250 Donors tab. So we know how to fix these dates. Remember, we're going to double click to expand. And we can make this just a little prettier maybe. Expand. Okay. So now let's move right into some and and a couple of formula features if we if we have time. But I think I do have time definitely to show you to show you how to come up with the sum. Because that's that is definitely um the most commonly used uh feature and uh formula in Excel. So let's uh, let me show you that. So I'm going to zoom out just a bit. And to get the sum, this is the icon for auto sum. Okay? And so to get the sum, what you want to do is select the cell where you want your sum to be displayed. And so for just purposes of this example, we want the sum to be displayed here. And here is I2. Okay? So now that I've selected that, now I want to select the auto sum icon. Now I want to select the sales that I need calculated for this sum. And so here I want to select this one. This was G2. And I also want to select, um, I want to select G3. So we have G2 selected. And we also have G3 selected. And so I'm going to hit Enter. And so now I have the total. I'm going to do that again. You want to select the cell where you want your total to be displayed. Select the Auto Sum icon. And you can either drag like this to select the total and hit Enter. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to do it again. Or you can select, and maybe I need a different cell. If you hold down the control key, you can move throughout your spreadsheet. And now let's select Enter. So did you see that? I do believe there's going to be a part two of this webinar. I'm excited about that. So we'll definitely go over some, some more formulas in the future. But um, I also want to show you something else with, uh, with the sum. So this is just a quick way. There is a manual way. I, I, I don't know anyone that is, who's ever said, uh, can you show me how to do the manual way <laughs> for it to get some? But really, really quick, I can definitely show you that. So again, you want to be in the cell where you want your total to be displayed. You want to enter the equal sign. 
you have to type the word sum. Now you have to use a parenthesis, and then you select the sales that you want the sum and hit enter. So that's the manual way, <laughs> okay? But you can also equal sign the cell that you want. And I'm going to just do plus sign and then another cell and enter, okay? So that's how you can, you can get your thumb. And of course, if you need to, uh, you need the difference, it would be the same thing. Of course, you wouldn't use the plus sign, you would use the minus sign. Okay? All right, so what else can we show you? What else do we have time for? Oh, I know what I wanted to show you. What is, this may be um, a life changer for you. I'm not sure. I know that it was for me <laughs> when I was first started using Excel. And that is sometimes you have a lot of data. I'm just going to remove this. Okay. But sometimes you have a lot, of, a lot of data. And let's say we wanted to, we needed to look at row 40. Okay, so we're at row 40. Well, if I'm just looking at this, maybe I don't know if this is his first or his last name because my header, I can't see my header. And if you have a lot of data, and I know that a lot of you nonprofits do, <laughs> and it, you, it, it's so hard, and sometimes you don't remember, what was, that, what was the title of that header? So what you can do is you can come up here, you can select your first row. If you select View, you have an option, <clears throat> excuse me, Freeze Panes, Freeze Top Row. And so now what happens is no matter how far down you go in your spreadsheet, the, the header will always be visible. Okay? The other thing that for me as a newbie with Excel that really, really helped me was to be able to hide data. Sometimes you have so much data, and I don't want to delete it, and I don't want to filter it. I just want to hide it so that I don't, I don't see it. And, and so we can do that. And the way you do that is you can select the column. You could right-click, and you can hide. Okay, So it's not filter, filtered out. It's not deleted. And as you can see, it's just hidden. Column D is the, is the column that we just did. And to unhide it, you would select the column before it and the column after. Right-click, unhide. Okay? Excellent. So now I want to go over the best ways um, when it comes to printing your information. Um, I don't know about you. When I first started Excel and I started printing reports, it didn't look like what I thought was on my computer screen. <laughs> and, and that was very, very frustrating. You know, sometimes we need the, the headers on every single column, but you know what? You have to tell Excel to do that for that to happen. And the way that we do that is we can go to Page Layout. Sorry. <laughs> we can go to Print Titles. And you see here, Print Area, Print Titles, Rows to Repeat at Top, Columns to Repeat at the Left. We want to do Rows to Repeat at the Top, and this is the row that we want it repeated on every single page. Okay? Okay. Did you see that? And so now when it's printed, if there are several pages, let's see if we can do a print preview here. Is it on the second page? Let's see. It looks like it is. But do you see how the donation, it's just on that one page. Let's fix that. 
So the way we can fix that, a couple of ways actually. We, let's go to View, and let's do Page Break Preview. When you do Page Break Preview, do you see this little dotted line here? This lets me know this is the beginning of a new page. Do you see that? So that's why donation was on a page of its own. The page break is right here. But you have the power in Excel. <laughs> you can move this page break. Let's move it over here. And now let's just delete this column. I don't know why it's here, but let's delete it. And so now we should have one page. There, it looks like there's going to be a second page, but it's going to be blank. Do you see that? We can get rid of that too. So now we have a clean spreadsheet. It looks like it's all on one page. Let's go back and let's take a look. And there it is. Okay. Now I also want to let you know that you can print to PDF as well. So you can convert your Excel spreadsheets to PDFs if need be. Okay. Okay. I also want to show you here. I believe there was something else I wanted to go over here. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? So yes, thank you so much, Lakeisha. We do have a lot of questions, a lot of questions. So let's start this, the question and answer. And how, since this is a live demo, the question and answers, if Lashika can demo some of, the, um, some of your answers to the questions or verbally just say it, it's going to be engaging. So the first question that we have is, can we convert a Word table into an Excel spreadsheet? Yes, that is a great question, and yes, yes, you can. Um, so that's taking a Microsoft Word table and making that into an Excel table. Um, do I have time to show? Um, do I have time? Okay. So I may move. A l I'm I'm going to try to do this slowly, but I, I have to move out of um out of Excel, and I'm going to go into Word, and I'm going to do the exact um the the all of the steps that you would do. Okay. And I'm going to use the same going to use the same data if that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I just want to select the, this information. Just, just, just one, one moment. I'm just going to copy this, and I'm going to put this in Microsoft Word just for the purposes of demonstrating this to answer this uh, question. It's a great question, by the way. Thank you. So we are saying that this is our information we have a table in Excel. I'm, I'm sorry, we have a table in Word, and we want this to be in Excel. So what you would do, here's our table. Okay? And so we want this in Excel. Again, as you notice, a lot of the icons here, well, all of these icons, uh, icons here are exactly the same as they are in Excel. So what we can do is select all. We can copy. Oh, I've been told that you can't see my table. Okay, okay. Um, so this is what I'm when, when I go to Word. You can't see my table. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's see. How can we? Okay. 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 I'm sorry about that. Thank you for your patience. So I'm going to try something here, and I hope that you can – oh, okay, here's my table. Can you see that? Am I, can I get a thumbs up? Not – no one can see the table? 
Okay. Hmm. Everyone can see it. You can. Oh, okay. I can see it. Great, great. So I have a table in in Word. Do you, do you see this here? And what I want to do um, is we need to convert this to um, Excel. We can just really copy and paste. You copy, copy the content from your Word table. Okay. And now we're going to go to Excel. Uh, can you see my Excel sheet? I'm going to click on Sheet 3. And I'm going to uh, go to my first cell here, and I'm going to paste. Okay? I believe that that is the easiest and the best way if you want to uh, convert, per se, um, a Word table into Excel. Uh, because sometimes what would happen if, if you try to use other different, uh, some software to convert, what tends to happen is you lose a lot of formatting. So what would happen is a lot of times what I've seen is that instead of this being two cells as it was on the um, original Microsoft Word file, what I have seen is that these two then be, they merge as one. Okay, when you try to use some different program, you don't have to use um, a program to convert Word to Excel. So hopefully um, that, that was easy for you. I'm happy to, to show that again if need be. If not, I'm happy to take uh, any more questions or any uh, more demos. I'm happy to do that. Oh yes, thank you for that. So see, we have a lot of tips, tricks, and hacks. So uh, remember, if we don't get to all of your questions, I am chatting out a link that has some help, some answers to your questions to give you some run, you know, just give you examples of how to use tips and tricks. So the next question that we have here is: Is there any shortcut to paste the cell format painter inside of? Control V. Okay. Do you? If not, we can move on. Let, let me give you another question. Okay. Can you quickly review locking a roll of cells? I tend to get the wrong one that's fixed while the other ones, others are moved. So, locking cells. I think a good example would be to. Um, Freeze, you know, I've, we've gotten a couple of those questions where, you know, there's a lot of columns or rows and uh, with a lot of data. If you can show them how to do a freeze pane, yeah, yes, I'll show I that. think that's something that okay, a lot yeah, of people sure. Have no, no, about. that that was um, that was actually something that that helped me when I first started using Excel because uh, again, depending on. Um, the amount of data that you're working with, it is very important to be able to to hide columns and, and information so that you can focus on uh, what you need to focus on or analyze what you need to analyze very quickly. So uh, right now I'm in Page Break Preview. That's why you have the blue box. So I want to go back to Normal View, and so that's what I did there. And so again, um, to freeze your pain, and I believe, yeah, this one is already – so let's do – so I'm going to select the, the row that I, I need to freeze, and it's this one. I have that selected. Freeze pane, freeze top row. Okay? You can also – Select the row or the – I'm sorry, select the columns or the rows that you want to hide. You can right-click and hide. You can select, right-click, and hide. Okay? And so if I want to unhide that, I would select the column before and after it, unhide, and now it's visible. Okay? I hope that answers your question. 
Great. Thank you for that. Another question is, can you organize your data in numerical order? Say you want your raw data donations in greatest to least. Oh, so absolutely. Can- absolutely. Okay. So, yes. So you have here in column F, these are donations. Actually, let's go to our raw data because if you remember, we filtered we filtered our, our raw data to get this because we were looking at um, $250 donations. So let's go to our raw data. And I'm going to remove the filter because right now, again, we just filtered for $250. So I want to click that, and I want to clear filters. So now this is, this is my raw data. So what I can do here is I can select the column, go back to my home so I can have all of my options here. And so again, remember this is the sort. Sort. And so now they are in order from smallest to largest. Okay? Great. So we also have another great demo question that you can do. It's can you protect a sheet? So if you can show us how to protect, because you, you know, working in, with private and sensitive information, you know, you want to probably show how um, to show the users how they can protect the data. Absolutely. So what you want to do, we can You can actually you can protect sheets and you can also protect your um the, the entire workbook. Okay? So I'm going to go to, uh, did I lose it? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, ha- I have an error message. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. So we're going to show you how to how to protect your your workbook. Okay. So what you want to do is I think I've just selected the Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Okay. Sorry about that. I seem to be having some technical difficulties. I'm sorry. I want to let me see if I can fix this on my end. So while while we're working on dealing with the technical difficulty, um, I will be chatting out additional links for everyone to if they have any questions in reference to utilizing. Excel. I just chatted out a link to everyone, and this will give you the tips and tricks. Again, this is a helpful for more Excel help because we have a lot of in-depth questions and answers and um, to help you. Again, we've already looked at the freeze pane. We also have showed you guys how to um, manipulate data and everything. So since We don't have any – let's see if I can find some other questions. If you guys can chat about any other questions, that would be be great. And also, chat your feedback. Is there anything that you would like to know in detail? Okay. So now we're, we're back. We're ready now to answer more questions. I just wanted to get everyone engaged. Everyone, this is a lot of great information. So again, we are going to show you how to protect oh. the data. We're going to show you how to protect data because in your, non- in your nonprofits you have highly sensitive data, 
and you want to protect it. So, Sheikha, hand it over to you. Thank you. I was actually, I'm actually having technical difficulties on this end. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make sure that when we send out the uh, follow up after the webinar that we'll be uh, we'll definitely include those steps in that in that email in that follow up. Uh, it looks like we do have time though for another question, maybe perhaps another another demo. Um, does anyone have any questions? Anything else I yes, can demo? I do. So the another great question I have is what is the best way to use Excel for accounting? within nonprofit? Well, I definitely would not recommend um, using Excel for accounting, meaning to actually um, manage the, the books per se for an organization. Um, I believe that have, using a software like uh, QuickBooks and other different programs and software that we offer through our TechSoup product donation program uh, would be best suited for a nonprofit. There are just some, there are just some things and some settings that are a part of the accounting software that you just cannot get with Excel. Um, you can do a lot with Excel, however, um, as far as calculating taxes and just the the way that Excel is organized. I think that it would be difficult to use only Excel um, to be your accounting management tool. I believe that Excel can be used um, as far as accounting purposes. I believe that that's the best tool to use to, to develop profit and loss statements. I believe that it's the best tool to use to generate um, expense report forms. Um, those types of things I believe that's good for accounting. But to, um, I, again, I would not recommend uh, a, a nonprofit or any organization of that matter to use Excel uh, and as their, so, their, their solely software for, uh, for accounting. I, I wouldn't recommend that. Thank you, Lashika. Now, everyone, we're done with our questions. We're running out of time. But before we close, I just want to say a few things. Now, again, I chatted out several times some links for everyone to um, utilize. We will hopefully have a part two. This will be a recorded webinar along with the PowerPoint presentations and additional tips, tricks, and hacks that we, um, that we didn't cover. We're going to look through the historical chat to look for some common questions and try to find some tips to direct you. Okay? So now before we close, I would love for everyone to take a look here at the screen. We have um, our website, techsoup.course.tc forward slash catalog. That's, where, that's our learning management system. We encourage everyone to sign up. You can sign up and take a host of classes um, when it comes to our software, when it comes to just all types of cool um, data, technology related information for your nonprofit. Now before we go, what I want what I want you to do, because you guys have been so amazing and engaged, just chat one thing that you learned today in the webinar. So just chat you know, a couple of just three, three characters, ten characters, a paragraph. We love all the feedback. What did you learn? What would you like to learn in the future? Will you share this? Also, will you share this information with your colleagues and your network? So yeah, just type that in. And while you're doing that, con once this webinar concludes, we will have a survey that we would really love for you guys to fill out. It's only a, it will only take you a few minutes, and it will pop up once the, the webinar concludes. We take that data, and it's for TechSoup, so we can bring our um, customer base the latest and greatest information and make improvements you know, for our audience. Also, we have some amazing upcoming webinars. Not only do we just do Excel, but we also have um, three upcoming webinars, one, one that's going to be in the month of August on the 24th, which is in two, a couple of days. It's Creating um, Accessible Online Resources with People 
with, that have disabilities. And then you've probably heard about our Storymakers campaign, and we have our first um, campaign coming up. And it's a 10-step process with our partner, Greenpeace. And then finally, all of you guys love or want to hear about funding. That's what keeps our nonprofits running is learning about funding. So GrantStation, which I'm sure everyone is familiar with, they're one of our partners. You will hear, um, if you sign up on the 20th, an amazing presentation. That's the first of a three-part series of how GrantStation works and how you can utilize it to increase fundraising with your organization. And finally, I do want to say thank you to our sponsor, ReadyTalk. This is the webinar platform that we give our great um, presentations. I want to thank everyone that participated, all 600 of you. And for remember, this is, going to, this is a recorded webinar. You're, you're going to get your PowerPoints for all of those that registered and also will be up on our YouTube, all of our social media by the end of the day. And we will include the PowerPoint slides. I want to thank LaShika Phillips, Susan Hope Bard, and again, my name is Alicia Kidd, and we want to thank you. And please don't forget to fill out the survey once the meeting concludes. Thank you, everyone. Have an awesome day. And I hope this was a helpful webinar, and we look forward to seeing you again.